Hell, man. The snake just came at us. Like full on attack mode. Big thing, like maybe two meters. Wow, there's a piece. Dude, I think that's a mamba. Oh, that snake is so dangerous. Okay. We are in the thick of it right now. Listen, before we do these videos, I take a second so we can make an agreement together. We've been here before, not exactly right here though. This is basically the middle of the DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo. And we've been invited to go hunting with the Pygmy tribe. But one agreement we've got to make together before we get started is that with these remote places, there are different beliefs and different ways of living. So please keep an open heart and keep an open mind. We are very lucky to have been invited here with this tribe. And no doubt we're gonna see some things that are a little bit different than the milkshakes and hamburgers that we eat back home. So with that in mind, and if you're on board, let's continue. <laughs> In the last video, we landed in the remote jungle province of Shuapa in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where we were labeled spies by the local governor. We escaped on motorbikes and had to trade a crocodile for a bed. In this video, we continue that adventure and finally arrive in the town of Ngende late in the night. The next morning, the locals were just a little bit surprised to see us. Good morning. Mbote. Comment ça va? Bonjour. While I'm getting my makeup done, my guide Obed negotiates a two day hunting trip with a local pygmy tribe in the jungles here. We pack up and we set off. The adventure begins. This beautiful green majesty in front of me <laughs> is the home of the pygmies. The plan is to go hunting. We've got like a two hour trek to the hunting camp and there we're gonna try to catch some food. Honestly, I'm just happy to be here. This is a bucket list item for me. The green heart of Congo ah, is mostly unexplored. So together, we're gonna do some exploring. And that makes me really happy. This, this is this, like a spear. Uh -huh. Okay. This is Lieutenant, uh -huh. and he's the master of charades. <laughs> Might have to try to get that translated. <laughs> Oh, they're blocking the water. Like a dam. And then for fish? Pesh, pesh. These women are with our group and had left earlier in the day to fish. They're building dams and bailing out the water to collect the small fish and shrimp that live in the pools. We'll see their catch later. Hey! Oh, Mandele is me. Huh? Go slow. Okay, watch out. Go slow. <laughs> Mendele means white guy. That's my name here. <laughs> oh my god. 
Oh, something's moving down there. Oh, oh it's still moving on my foot. Oh, oh shit, man. I don't know what I expect. Hey. And everyone laughs at the Mdele. <laughs> oh my god. Eventually, we make it to camp. Uh huh? Yeah. Ici? All right. Okay. Not maison. Yeah. Hey, all right. Looks like we made it. Uh huh. It's still under construction. But hey, it looks cozy, right? This kid, he's a troublemaker. His name is Lulu, or Ilolo, and he calls me. As some tribe members finish setting up camp, others ready their bows and arrows and prepare traps for the hunt. Obed explains what's happening next. They, they deploy themselves in the forest, they share the tasks. Those small girls, they want to collect just leaves, these leaves for, for making those uh, the package. Then uh, the, uh, the boys will go to hunt. The women will go to fish. Yeah, that's how they deploy themselves. Uh -huh. Some people are afraid of jungles, the darkness under the canopy, the creatures hiding within. These deep jungles of Congo contain mysteries, secrets that only the ones who dwell here know. Over time, we've become disconnected from this life. We no longer know how to use nature to aid us. So we fear it, and we think getting dirty will make us sick. You know what I think is making us sick? Hiding away in glass houses, sanitizing our surfaces, and eating packaged processed foods in hopes to keep the germs away. But sorry kids, we are germs. We live on this world, and there's an entire world that lives on us all working together in a complicated way that we can't begin to understand. What's making us the most sick is our obsession trying not to be. It's pretty damn ironic. We've uh, found a hole. <coughs> We're calling in backup. C'est quoi? Les animaux. Les animaux? Quelle sorte? <laughs> Brave man sticking his hands down a dark hole in the middle of a jungle. So I, I stay, yeah? yeah? I stay. Don't move. The, you missed it, but I just got told off by a uh, lieutenant. He's like, Mdele, Mdele, if you walk around like this, the animals are going to go away. So stop moving around so much. The tribe clear cuts the area, and then flat pieces of wood are carved with a single hole in each. They're placed over the openings of the tunnels. Then a small piece of cloth is lit on fire and placed into the opening. Then we all intently watch as the smoke spins up from the hole. I'm still confused though. Are we smoking them out? Because it seems like all the smoke is getting out. Until I realize something amazing. Any movement in the tunnel will change the air pressure in the tunnel, causing the smoke to dance. See that? This, however, was not from an animal moving underground. It was from the other men spearing the ground, trying to hit a tunnel. When they do, the smoke moves from the air pressure. It's like a subterranean jungle x-ray. It's ingenious. It looks like the occupants have been evicted or eaten. We set up a snare over the opening, just in case. Walking through the jungle with these boys and men is like touring a paper factory with origami artists. Every leaf, stem, and branch folded and bent into something completely different. I have no idea what's being crafted until it's finished. Any guess what this is? It's fish hooks. Uh, <laughs> it's a worm. Uh huh. Pour pêcher? Uh, there it is. That'll be for later. Oh, it's like it's, the, it's shaped like a square. Not not round. It's square, like a rectangle. That'll be fish food. 
啊。You gotta cook it first, right? At least you gotta cook it first. <laughs> a few of the guys take a break. <laughs> Watch out for the machetes. C'est bon, c'est bon. It's safe. Don't run with scissors and don't cuddle with machetes, right? We get to a series of pools. There's sand here in the jungle. We're 500 miles from an ocean, and the sand comes from underground. We're in the Congo River Basin, and for the tribes that live here, this clean and constant supply of groundwater is a blessing. We've seen this before, haven't we? It's a fishing method where self-fishing rods are placed and left as traps. Though I still don't understand why they flick the water first. Maybe to check for electric eels? I don't know. But if you know, or have a better guess, drop it in the comments. One of the boys gets something in his eye, and a vine is cut, and the liquid from inside is used to wash it. Another tells me to turn on the camera, then takes off his clothes and goes for a swim. <laughs> when in Rome, right? Where does that fish live that swims up your Johnson? Hopefully not here. While taking a swim, Ilolo finds a fish that was caught in yesterday's trap. Might need a few of those to feed the group, but hey, it's a start, right? And some of the others had forged some wild vegetables. Ooh, c'est très bon. Mm. Little bitter. A little bitter, but not bad. Mm -hmm. Having set up our traps, we get back to camp back. to see what the other hunting groups have caught. This is fish, and the orange is fresh palm oil. Also, mushrooms with salt, and minnows and shrimp from emptying the stream earlier in the day. It's a, it's a snake, yeah? I would guess some kind of boa. It's all wrapped in leaves, a traditional style of cooking called maboke, found all across DR Congo where the food is steamed inside leaves over a fire. Night falls as we wait for the food to cook. I don't know what the song means, but it's going to be stuck in my head for a week. The food's done. Let's eat. Honestly, I am a huge snake fan. It's the head. C'est la tête. It's not the piece I wanted. <laughs> it's the only piece left. Oh, Jesus. 
Meets meat, right? Mike, eating a snake head. It's okay. Poor snake, though. I'm trying to avoid the fangs. <laughs> I wonder if they're still loaded. Bon nuit. Michael. Michael. Comment allez-vous? Comment? Très bien. Et... Très bien. Et tout? Bon nuit. As we fall asleep, a few of the men sneak off to see if they can track any animals in the forest for a big hunt planned in the morning. Let's take a quick break so I can explain something to you. Okay, the reason why I travel to all these places is partly because... I love it, let's face it. Number two, because I want to share them with you, these untold stories. But number three, I want to help you conquer your fears so you can travel the world too. That's really what I want to do. I used to be this fear-riddled boy who didn't know his path in life, and I found it through <laughs> several misadventures along the way. And I've made a video where I put together all of the lessons I've learned over 10 years of traveling the world. Go to fearlessandfire.com slash fear and you can get it for free. It goes right into your email inbox and you can learn some of the lessons I've picked up the hard way. Fearlessandfire.com slash fear if you want to conquer your fears and travel the world too. Back to the show. Good morning. They have been giggling and laughing all night. I don't know if they even slept. Man, I look like I just spent a week in a tent in the jungle. That's exactly what I did without a shower. All right, let's face the day and see if there's any updates. So the update has been that nothing was caught last night. Uh, but they did find something in a tree that we're gonna go try and catch. Something kind of large. Don't know what it's called. Well, I know the name here, but don't know what to tell you it is. <laughs> that and we're gonna check the traps. Dude, I am moist. Everything about me is a little bit damp. Everywhere. But, that's life in the jungle. Let's have some coffee. I can think of that. One of the leaders gestures how they'll be shooting the animal they found with the bow. The other wants to show me something that's inside his basket. It's tobacco and a strange green plant. Those are some deep hits, man. It's like deep in all the way. Every little crack. <laughs> that shit almost killed me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, don't we? You didn't guess it. 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 I stepped on the on the on the lighter. <laughs> All right, there's a sleeping animal in a tree, and we're gonna we're gonna shoot it. We're gonna shoot it. Let's go. Show me, show me, show me. Hey, c'est bien. <laughs> we come across a huge colony of biting ants. One of the women grabs some leaves and shoves her fist into the colony, then folds them into a leaf package while picking their little jaws out of her skin. 
They bite hard, man. Ouch. Oh, but what's it for? This is for trapping the fish. They put it on a, on that hook. They put on a hook as yeah. a bunch of them. Uh -huh. So fishes will come to to, to pick them from the leaves. <laughs> this is Batumba, who's taken a liking to being on camera. We find the tree where the animal is sleeping. Some of the boys begin climbing the trees into the canopy to find it. Uh huh. <laughs> Good luck, my friend. <laughs> He's safe, yeah? He's safe as you. As safe as you can be. Please. <laughs> I give Batumba a GoPro for his search. Bora. Ilolo follows. Libora! Libora! <laughs> And to think, some kids these days can't even bike to school. <coughs> this is wild. The animal has moved. And after about 20 minutes, they begin to come back down. Continuing with the jokes, one of the other boys tries to cut down the tree before Batumba can get down. Yeah, oh my God. I love me. Hey, thank you so much, brother. That was amazing. The creature had moved on though they didn't return from the canopy empty-handed. These are mbinzo pupa, mm -hmm. the stage between a caterpillar and a butterfly. We saw the caterpillars in the markets, actually even at our hotel buffet. These caterpillars are a delicacy here, and also in East Africa, where they're called mopani worms. There's also a small package of leaves with a surprise inside. Oh, this is um, like a beehive, yeah? Just like that, huh? Yeah. For me, we've got um. I want to call it honeycomb, but there is no honey in this comb. It's literally just bee larva. I'll zoom in for a sec. See that? Just, just baby bees. Why is it always baby bees? <laughs> no, not a speck of honey. Okay, come on, we two. There's still, there's still live, there's still live bees. Come on, these ones too. Then what am I being a voice about, right? Ooh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, um, <laughs> it's uh, it pops in your mouth like you're eating a bunch of little grapes. Um, c'est bon, oui, c'est bon. <laughs> what does it taste like? It tastes like salt and bugs mixed together in small little packets that burst in your mouth like bubble tea. Still chewing on the comb. Probably don't need that part. <laughs> we do a little arts and crafts and continue our hunt down the stream. But then, chaos. Hell, man. A snake just came at us, like full on attack mode. Big thing, like maybe two meters. Wow, there's a piece. Poor thing, man. C'est pour manger ou? C'est c'est dangereux? Dangereux. Très animé. Où est où est le tête? Dude, I think that's a mamba. Oh, that snake is so dangerous. It's actually a Jameson's mamba. 
It's a kill you in three hours kind of snake. We are three hours deep into the jungle. I think you can probably figure out the math from there. It's a green jewel of the jungle that I wish would have just stayed hidden. What a beautiful animal. Unfazed, the boys wrap up the mamba in a to-go pack. And we're back on the trail. So, from what I understand, yeah. that's one of the most dangerous snakes in Africa, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see how it was zigzagging so, so fast? It was actually. It was coming through our right? legs. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I didn't get the moment on camera, but the guys were like, get out of the way! Get the f*** out of the way! And then they chased yeah, it into the they woods. Are, they are very protective. <laughs> they were. They understand how dangerous it is. Yeah. But it seems like anything's on the menu, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, I mean, everything. <laughs> everything. Yeah. <laughs> After a successful hunt, and now no reason to stay quiet, everyone lets loose on the way back to camp. We deliver the payload, and the mamba is gutted and cut into pieces. These pieces are then smashed with the back of a machete to break the bones inside. These are then roasted over the fire on sticks. Some pieces are placed directly onto the fire, along with the imbinzo pupa. These are then all placed inside the leaves and then steamed maboke style back on the fire. Batumba saves us two pieces to eat together. Dun, 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 dun. Here it is, one freshly cooked piece of green mamba. Cooked twice, by the way, and I appreciate that. It's kind of ironic, don't you think? Eating an animal that can kill you. If it was poisonous, it'd be different. People call them poisonous snakes. They're venomous snakes, it's different. If something's poisonous, you bite it and you die. If something's venomous, it bites you and you die. This animal, if it bites you, you're very much dead. One of the most venomous on the planet. Hopefully not poisonous though, because if it's poisonous, and I won't be around much longer. Oh, look at that skin. Well, now on the long list of things I can say I've eaten, I can put mamba there, but try everything once, right? Something's only once. Here I've got my man Obed. Hey. I would be happy to meet you and uh, show you my beautiful country. Obed is the DRC master. He does a lot of other African countries as well. If you want to come here or you're organizing some kind of film project or if you just want a private tour of this amazing country. Thank you so much. I'm Mike of Fearless and Far. Press that subscribe button if you haven't. Check out that video to help you conquer your fears as well. And I'll catch you in the next video here on Fearless and Far.